Hey, photographers. This is the Fujifilm X-S20. Although a great deal of the coverage of this camera is about its ability to vlog and create videos, at its heart, it's a small, capable, and very versatile stills camera. But who would buy a camera that did just that? Oh, I see hands. <laughs> In this video, I'm combining a review of the S20 stills features and functions with a tutorial. Yeah, now, if you'd like an introduction to the S20, there's a link to that in the description. I've posted a video similar to this one about the vlog and video features. The camera's on loan from Fujifilm Canada, who have not paid me, nor did they see the script or video before I posted. I am not sponsored, so there will be no interruptions while I read you an ad, <laughs> nor by YouTube's ad insertion engine. Let's start with some of the images I've taken over the last few weeks with a variety of Fujifilm's film simulations. The majority of these were taken with the XF 16-55 lens using auto settings. Most are straight out of the camera JPEG files, and I've posted them on Flickr if you'd like to see the EXIF data for lens, exposure, and other details. And there are no surprises here. Sharp, high-quality images with good tonal range and terrific color rendition. <laughs> now, before starting, take a minute to change some of the default settings. Some display options to consider. If you'd like to see the image you've just taken, it's a screen setting, image disp, I select 1.5. Then down to disp custom setting, lots of screen options here, and I find both histogram and highlight alert useful. Uh, way more customization than most. Uh, there are also display settings for the large indicators mode. Uh, but beware, some icons and settings don't appear when this is on. On the image quality menu, image size also includes aspect ratio. I use the largest, that's 3 by 2. The 16 by 9 TV aspect and square are also available. Now, each shows the number of images you'll get on the current SD card. Helpful. Instead of JPEG, you may use the high-efficiency image format, smaller files, better color reproduction, not so compatible. <laughs> I did not use that setting. Add RAW for more data for editing, but stay with Fine. And there are three RAW options with varying types of compression. I used lossless. Uh, recording RAW only leaves you the option to create JPEG, HEF, or TIFF in playback. Now, I did use the full auto setting and found its AI features. It identifies scenes like landscapes and detects movement or subjects like birds and streetcars, making the S20 a very useful camera for novices. Uh, however, you will find some capabilities like brackets and panorama are disabled in auto mode. Auto mode also feels slightly slow, mostly after pressing the shutter release, where there's sometimes a delay after the shutter is pressed. So, to show you what the S20 can do for a more experienced photographer, I'm going to start with the manual settings and then add the automations. Set the mode dial to M. The on-screen prompt shows you that the back dial sets the shutter speed, and the ring on the lens sets the aperture. Set the aperture ring to A to use the front dial for aperture instead. Now, on this camera, if you're in manual or aperture priority, A on the lens ring doesn't mean auto. Press the ISO key and turn the back dial to set the ISO. And while you're doing that, the meter screen left shows you the exposure. The pointer indicates how far you are from the camera's exposure recommendation, which is the zero center point. The S20 does have a meter selection hidden on screen two of the shooting menu called photometry, four settings that don't include highlight. But it's not available when face or subject detection is on. So the first exposure automation, select one of the three auto ISOs. Each has a default, a max 
and a minimum shutter duration. And that's great because you can set the aperture and shutter you need, but the camera still manages the exposure. If you want the camera to manage the shutter duration, turn the dial to A for aperture priority. The left side meter changes to display exposure value, and if you turn the back dial, it changes the duration to match the exposure level you want. Turn to S for shutter priority, front dial sets the duration, back dial sets exposure compensation, using the aperture to make the adjustment. Now, program mode, P, automates both aperture and shutter, and now the front dial is program shift, selecting other possible aperture and shutter combinations that give the same exposure results. The back dial adjusts the exposure compensation. If all that is too much for you, go back to auto, which lets the S20 manage all the settings. And for stills, generally safe to leave the camera in auto white balance, but when the camera is in the auto mode, you will not find white balance on the menu. In any other mode, it's the default for the key to the left of the viewfinder or on screen two of the image quality menu where you'll find three auto versions the default, one that makes a low light scene whiter, and another that preserves the amber ambience. Uh, of course, the usual suspects, Kelvin and three easy to set custom slots. Then turn the left side dial to select a film simulation, Fujifilm's color profiles. Lots of choice here. Press the Q for more detail on your selection. You'll find options designed for video, and monochrome. But let creativity be your guide. With black and white, the menu offers a color tuning option. Also on the menu, color chrome and chrome effects blue to increase color saturation. The menu also has a color saturation control that does not have an interactive preview. All of those settings can be selected or reset in playback using the RAW processing options. A good reason to use RAW. Uh, one of the features of the X-Trans sensor is great contrast, and the S20 also has settings to manage contrast. Dynamic range and derange priority provide settings to automate, each has minimum ISOs. You won't notice with auto ISO, but if you're setting ISO manually, you may need to increase the setting to access these. I find the range here fairly subtle. Sometimes only derange priority strong setting provides a noticeable result. And some are mutually exclusive. Derange turns off dynamic range and the tone curve. Now, the tone curve adjusts the slope of the highlight and shadow curves to create a more or less contrasty image. Again, all can be added or undone using raw processing. Uh, one more thing. In the drive settings, there are five HDR settings, although the results can sometimes be slightly artificial. Well, with exposure, color, and dynamic range set, let's make sure the image is in focus. The S20 has touch focus, selected top right, as long as the setup menu, button dial setting, touch screen option is on. Shot is tap and snap, AF focuses the tapped subject, but doesn't take an image, and area sets the focus area. Uh, that may be all you need to know. In the absence of a focus mode switch, the easiest way to change it is with the Q menu. By default, it's the second option in the top row, but I found two alternatives. The first is to assign a custom key, button dial settings, the function key options. Six keys can be customized, and I'd recommend either the video record key beside the shutter or the white balance key beside the viewfinder. Now, I only record video in video mode when the shutter release starts and stops recording. So that's my preferred option, set focus mode. Press and the on-screen selector appears. Now, here, a note to Fujifilm engineers. 
would be nice if there was an option that toggled the focus mode when the key was pressed. Now, my other suggestion is adopting continuous autofocus as the default mode and not switching modes as often as I do. I find the wide area of focus in continuous that also enables tracking to be a most useful area selection. To change to a specific or smaller focus spot, move the focus joystick. When the green frame appears, turn the front dial to set the size, use the joystick to position. And this is the 117 point selection screen. The focus menu also has a more granular 425 point setting. Both provide focus selection to nearly the edge of the scene. And focus is fast. Let me demo in single AF mode. This demo takes the lens, this is the 16 to 55, from infinity to the lens's closest focus distance. It's also fast at the very edges. Back to continuous, where wide area enables tracking, and there are several ways to customize continuous with three settings. There are five defaults with suggestions for the intended purpose and custom. Select the sensitivity from quick reaction to locked on, the movement type, steady or changing, and area, center, front or close to subject, and auto. Uh, lots of adjustments if the defaults don't provide your desired results. Now, this demo uses default one, multipurpose. I set the tracking start point where my Brio train enters the scene. The S20 grabs on and maintains focus on the train through a change in direction to the lens's closest focus point, where it briefly changes to face eye detect. Seems good. Combined with continuous shooting, there's some confusion at the closest focus point. Uh, now, of the 40 images, only two, as the train reaches the closest focus, are soft, but then it recovers. A standard set of face eye detect options and six subject specific settings. Now, here's where the camera's full auto mode with its detection algorithms can be most useful to select the right one quickly. I wish that this setting, subject and faces, had its own auto mode. Subject detection turns face off, but when subject is turned off, it doesn't turn face back on. Hopefully that's fixed in a firmware update. Now, no one provides better manual focus options than Fujifilm. An expanded focus view, turn focus check on for auto activation, when the focus ring is turned. Uh, that should be the default setting. And three other visual assist options. Of course, now that I've seen Sony's focus map, I'd love to have that feature here too. Unlike Sony though, in manual mode, the AF on key still works, a very useful manual focus assist. That's essentially the back button focus option on the S20, so no need to find and override the shutter focus interlock in the menu. But if you look for it, you'll find that it's independent between single and continuous focus modes. I decided to leave it on for single, but use back button focus for continuous. Nice options. Now, in Fujifilm's media briefing, they claimed substantial improvements for continuous shooting. The S20 has twice the memory of the S10, supports faster SD cards, and has an improved processor. So I set up my iPad stopwatch to do some tests. Using a UHS-2 card, I selected large fine JPEGs and set exposure, focus, and white balance to manual. Using the mechanical shutter locks in the 8 frame per second high speed burst. The S20 clicks merrily along without skipping a beat. After a minute, when I stopped, it had saved 480 frames, exactly eight per second. That's very good. I added raw lossless compressed. It maintains the eight frame rate for about 15 seconds, then slows to about five per. Turning raw off and changing to the electronic shutter, full frame burst goes up to 20 frames. 
now silent, the shutter sound no longer provides feedback to hear what's going on. But after a minute, it was still saving 20 frames per second. That's excellent, the best I've seen, particularly as the buffer clears in less than 10 seconds. I turned RAW back on. Now the 20 frame rate is sustained for 2 seconds before slipping back to about 5 per. RAW OFF and up to the 30 frame cropped mode. That checks out to 18 seconds before slowing just slightly to about 26 frames per second. For the record, that's 863 images in 30 seconds. Now, other drive modes include multi-exposure, an easy-to-use panorama setting, and a bunch of brackets including exposure, white balance, film sim, and focus. Then in the menu, you'll find a basic self-timer feature and an interval timer for time-lapse, which does not have the ability to save the results as a video file. Playback includes Fujifilm's usual wide range of capabilities, raw conversion to do, undo, or change most of the color and dynamic range features. Raw conversion can create HIF or TIFF files, but also HIF files can be converted to JPEG or TIFF. Voice memo can be used to record snippets of audio along with an image. It would be nice if there was a simultaneous setting for this, so you didn't have to do it afterwards. Fujifilm's newly updated smartphone app, rebranded as XApp, works as a remote, transfers images manually or automatically, and keeps a record of your photo activities. I'm hoping to do a more detailed review of that soon. Now, I do have one small gripe. The S20 is just a little too small. The flange is so low that the 16 to 55 millimeter lens extends below the body, so my Manfrotto quick release plate cinches the bottom of the lens. However, I would not let a small issue like that change my very high opinion of the S20. It's exceptional for stills and excellent for video. It's only June, but I'm predicting this will be the best APS-C format camera of 2023. And as I said, I'm not sponsored. No company pays me or tells me what to say. This camera and kit goes back to Fujifilm after this review. My revenue comes from Google Ads, before or after the video, and from the generous super thanks that my viewers contribute. I do enjoy engaging with you, so please post your relevant questions and civil comments. I read and reply to all. And thanks for finding the time to watch today. Stay safe. Thank you.